All right, guys, it's the Urban Sentinel here, and this video is going to be about prepping and preppers that live in apartments. Now, in many cases, there's not that much of a difference between being a homeowner, living in a home, and an apartment. You might be renting out a floor of a second or third story house. You could be in an apartment building that has 12 units. You might be in an apartment building or complex that has 200 plus units, and you're on the 12th or the 15th floor. The primary difference is with being a homeowner, you can decide what you're going to do with the structure physically. If you want to knock out a wall, if you want to add something to it, you can go ahead and do that. Unless something violates a city ordinance, usually with regards to safety codes and the outside near the public access, it's all yours. It's fair game. But for an apartment, you don't have that opportunity and you don't have that option. And many people that rent are renting over a long-term basis, but they're still, it's not something that they can just do and set in and become permanent to the structure itself. So with that being said, what I want to start looking at is the organizational aspects that you can do. Now, you may fall into one of these three primary categories. You might be renting by yourself, no roommates, nobody living with you, and to a certain extent, you can do what you want within your apartment. You might have a roommate, if that roommate is someone that is along the same mindset of prepping and being ahead of the curve, then it makes it a lot easier. If your roommate, on the other hand, is someone who really doesn't see the need for it, or you're in a situation where you really don't want to let that roommate or that other person know that you're getting into prepping, that also too plays into it. The other disadvantage to an apartment is a lot of um, apartment complexes and buildings have custodians, on-site maintenance, they do inspections, they do cleanings, they have access to your apartment when you're there, when you're not there. They may notify you that uh, an, a an exterminator is coming by to kill some bugs. They may not. So you also, again, have to consider, do you want all of your preps stacked up and stored where everyone can see them, or do you want to be able to put them in a more discreet fashion so that way if someone does come in, they're not immediately recognizing what you have as preps. So I'm also going to touch on some of those things, but first and foremost, space, because by and large, you don't have a lot of space to work with. You maybe have two or three closets, depending upon the number of bedrooms. You might have a hallway that you could put a few things in, and depending upon your furniture and your overall decor style, you may or may not have the type of room that you want to be able to store up long-term storage. So the first thing you have to look at is wherever possible, if you buy preps, take them out of their original containers if they are in, let's say, soft plastic bags. Put them into Ziploc bags, put them into trays. Now I'm gonna get into, right off the top, the storage containers. Now, as an example behind me, I've got several clear plastic containers. They come in six quart, which are about the size of a shoebox, 16 quart, such an example as this one. I also have a larger 24 quart and a 41 quart, which realistically, this one, I just threw extra ramen noodles in, but this would be something that you could effectively slide under your bed or under a sofa. And with that, you're able to take a lot of preps and get them out of sight, but still have them readily access accessible for you. Another thing you want to look at as an example, tuna fish, five ounce can. They're the same any place you go. This definitely is a prepper staple. But if you go and you look in certain sections, you'll find, effectively speaking, tuna in small packets. Stacking up 24, 36, 48 cans of these does take up some space and it takes a lot of weight versus having a container of these stacked up. You save a lot more space, you save a lot of weight, and it makes it a lot easier also to pack up and grab and go when you need to. And that's part of the mindset that you need to have if you're in an apartment, someplace that you're renting that is not yours. Now, granted, certain commonalities, a fire, a chemical spill, something that may cause a homeowner to have to leave their house, no matter how badly they want to stay. They also would have to leave all their preps, except for what they could take with them. That goes true for people in an apartment. There's not specifically greater or less risk to certain types of disasters. They're common across the board. 
if your neighbor's house that's 25 feet away catches on fire, there's a good chance that the heat could ignite any debris material in your yard and your house could be on fire. No different than if you're in a 20 unit apartment building and one apartment three floors below you at the back of the building catches on fire, there's a good chance that the whole building or at least several sections of one or two floors are gonna be on fire as well and you'll still have to leave. But with being a renter, it's almost to a certain extent you need to pack and prep as if at any day, any moment, you're always going to be effectively moving out, going out, bugging out. You need to look and focus your preps that way first versus you're going to hunker in and stay inside for as long as it takes, which I'm not saying that that's not also a possibility because when everyone was in lockdown, there were millions of people living in apartments, had nothing to do. They were stuck inside their apartments because there was nothing to do outside, no place they could go. Things were shut down. So you still want to be able to be comfortable and stay within your apartment but you also have to understand that as a renter, there's always a good chance that even for something simple as a cleaning, extermination, uh, doing some electrical work, you may be asked to vacate for a while and go to a, another unit in a building, or maybe they give you a voucher to stay at a motel. But meanwhile, all of your preps, they're going to be stuck at that apartment. Now, going into storage, having things in containers definitely works if it's about space. If you want to keep your living space looking like a normal apartment and you don't want all of these items out and about staring at you or just for the sheer space that you do have. If you don't have a lot, you don't want stacks and stacks of water and everything else, you have to get a little more creative. Utilize what you can in your kitchen for your normal everyday things. You know, double up, triple up, stack it as far back as you can. Then look at getting tubs, getting uh, storage containers and bins that you can put into a closet. Maybe you have one dedicated closet that you can stack up several uh, bins and containers with your food, with your water, with your medical preps, things like that. Get a, a creative idea of, as I mentioned before, storing things under a sofa, under your bed, putting them in places where immediately when you look at them, you don't think about it. Even if it's something uh, on the creative level of you take four tubs and stack them up and put a uh, two by six plywood board on top and throw a decorative looking uh, tablecloth over it and then you throw a stereo, a couple of pictures and some books on top, someone sees it, they just think it's a, an end table or a side table and nothing more than that. And even if they lift up the cover, they just see four tubs, nothing else. They're not going to bother thinking, well, maybe they're just clothes or something inside, or maybe they're extra books, or maybe they keep their older DVDs and VHS tapes in there. It's not going to be any real interest to them, but your preps are right there. Mentioning that, disguising a lot of what you have is also beneficial in a rental area because a lot of apartments, at least the larger ones, tend to have storage units for the apartments. In a lot of cases, it's just two by fours and chain link fencing and some plywood. It's enough that you can clearly identify this is your storage area, but it's not going to keep anybody out should they choose to break in. It's not going to be a Fort Knox. What you can do is a few simple tricks. Even within your own apartment, you have a tub, you've got old clothes, or let's say you've got seasonal clothes, you've got some winter gear. Take some of those items, take your, your pants, whatever, you take some of your prepping products, flat pack them, put them into uh, glad bags, Ziploc bags, slip them into the pants, fold your pants up, stick them in there. Two, three, four, five, six pairs of pants or sweatshirts or jackets with just other clothes on top. Even if someone opens it up, they're going to see sweater, sweatshirt, pants, pants, and by the time they get three or four layers in, they just figure it's all closed. They're going to leave it alone. But underneath going down, you might have two, three days worth of rations. You might have another tub that, again, has some old DVDs, some old pictures and things like that, personal items that no one sees as of value. But underneath, you have prep stored up in there. So that's a way for you to both save space with personal items and gear, as well as storing up your preps. If you arrange certain things to be grouped together, so you have tubs that are designated for first aid, hygiene, you have things set up for communications, you have things set up for uh, cold weather, you have all the different degrees of capability that you have with your clothing, with your gear items, everything like that, staged in different tubs and containers. One, it's easier for you to keep track of. Two, it's easier when you do store them, let's say in a storage facility, storage locker, keep them in a, uh, a closed up container, a tub that you can't see inside. 
this way no one knows and label it something innocuous on the top you know old clothes or old uh, or um, soccer equipment football gear something like that where someone if they happen to look and happen to see it they're not going to think that's something of value they're going to think you know oh textbooks and you know photo albums nobody cares about that they're going to leave it alone and if they happen to be curious and if they happen to decide that they're going to take a look inside they open it up they see some old school books they see some photo albums really nothing of interest that's going to capture their attention and they move on it's not a guarantee just like anything in life but it's one thing that you can do when you look at where you live the square footage of your actual apartment and you start thinking, well, you're not concerned about having your preps, effectively speaking, out in your common area, your kitchen, wherever. You just you need to stack up where you need to stack up. That comes down to spacing. Treat it like furniture. If you've got 20 cases of bottled water, where can you put that where it's both accessible but still out of the way? Maybe you put it against a, a wall, stack it up two, three high, maybe four or five across. And then you can still utilize the space on top. Again, get some plywood, put a board on top, keep some books up there. Or you can stack other uh, storage bins on top of that. If you have space under your bed, same thing again. Utilize the space under your bed. Maybe under your bed, you keep a couple of containers, your bug out bag, and some other stuff that if you wake up because a fire alarm's going off, if you wake up because uh, the gas station a half mile down the road just blew up and one quarter of the neighborhood is on fire, and you have to evacuate, whatever the case may be, you can just reach under your bed, grab your bug out bag, throw that on, grab the tub, open it up, grab those few critical items that you need, and you head out the door and you're gone. Whatever your setup is, you make it functional for you first. And it really comes down to taking a look at what you have and then just looking around, where can this go? It's like playing Tetris. You look at the shapes of the space that you have, that you live within, and what you can fit and where it will go and start building from there and again depending upon the square footage of your apartment you may have plenty of room you may be in a tight space i had a, a small studio apartment when i was younger it was it was small but it had just enough space that i had a few areas that i pretty much had tub set up with some extra gear and some extra preps i didn't have a lot back then this was decades ago but i had enough to get me by should i need to you know basically hunker down and stay inside for a while. I've progressed to the point where now within my household and around my house, I have a bit more wiggle room to move and put things there, which also adds to the problem of sometimes keeping track of, you know, what I've got, but that's a whole different thing altogether. Another thing you need to look at, if you're in a building, three stories, five, seven, 15, you also have to start thinking about that's a lot of eyes on you. And if you're trying to keep a low profile, coming in and out with a lot of bags from different places or a lot of boxes from places that, you know, cater towards prepping and EDC and things like that can draw attention. So rule number one, no matter what you buy, tear the damn boxes up, tear the boxes up, take your apartment uh, name and address, black that out. So this way, when you throw that stuff away into the dumpster, into the garbage bin, less chance that someone sees a box and knows what apartment it was to. That's just pure, plain, simple, safe. Even if you take the address off and put it into your garbage and then that's in a bag, then throw it out. Again, reduces the chance that someone by accident associates a high-end quality item with where you live. The other thing you can do is you should have these is just basically reusable shopping bags. Get five or six of them. In a lot of cases, if you're going out to a store to physically buy certain prepping items, certain gears, put them in those nondescript bags that are from a grocery store. People aren't going to blink an eye, especially nowadays. People take two and three trips to the grocery store during the week because they have to go to two and three different grocery stores, a lot of cases, to find everything that they need. That just a year ago, two years ago, you could take one trip once a week, maybe twice during the month and you could get everything you needed. Now that's not the case. Now you have to go to this store to get this, go to this store to get these five other things, and then check this store for the last three or four things that you need. So again, if you come back to your apartment and you've just got shopping bags, you can easily you know, pass by people and no one's gonna think anything of it. It helps you disguise what you're bringing in for your preps. Another idea you can think of, and again, a lot of these, it's just putting the thought out there, but you still have to think it through 
do your research on it and decide that if it's something that you yourself are capable of doing. When you are in a multi-story building, getting out is important, especially getting out in regards to getting from the top down to the bottom. The higher up you are, the greater your risk is in any situation. Now, it's not something that you do just to do, and you definitely, it's gonna be difficult to practice it, but have an escape rope. And I don't mean if you're on the 20th floor having 250 feet of line. I mean, if you are a climber and you do mountaineering and you know how to do that, then good on you. I just mean that if you're, let's say, on the above the third floor, realistically, if you're above the third floor, have a durable line, half inch, three quarter inch line with enough length on it to double loop it around. Say, for example, your apartment has two windows side by side. That center post might be six to eight inches overall in diameter. Double looping around that, nodding it off, putting the line out the window and going down. Now, two things you take into consideration. Ascending a rope is easier when the rope has interval knots. Descending becomes difficult because as you go down, those knots can snag on your pant cuff, on your belt. It might hook onto the bug out bag that you have around your back and that can hem up the line and cause you to either lose your grip lose your footing placement when you have your legs wrapped around it and it slows your descent to a certain degree but it's still also safer because it provides a certain level of purchase for your hands and your feet as you move down a clean line is easier to descend but again if you don't have gloves and you don't have good control that descent can be real quick now what you have to consider is you're not looking to get from whatever floor your apartment is all the way down to the ground reasonably speaking you're looking to get one maybe two floors below that's the key thing if you're on the 15th floor i'm not saying go from the 15th down to the ground floor i'm saying have enough line that you can securely get from the 15th to the 14th or the 13th and make your way into if there's a balcony the balcony and then the windows from there have a glass break item or some type of lightweight item that is designed to quickly and efficiently break glass with you or with that rope specifically so this way when you get ready to descend you can easily do that and if you set your rope up with let's say a good carabiner and anchor on it you loop it around twice it's got a 500 pound test weight d-ring shackled on it with the carabiner and you clip those together that'll hold the line and then down you go you need to be able to break that window because what you don't want to do is do what you see in the movies where they kick through the glass because two things happen you're not gonna have enough momentum, most likely, if you're just doing a straight descent to kick through the glass. And also too, the last thing you want is as you go through, slicing an artery, tearing your leg up, not getting all the way through and losing your grip and now you've impaled yourself on the shards of the glass that are still there. That just kills your escape right off the top because you're gonna bleed out before you get to the hallway to make your way down to escape whatever the problem is up where you were at. So you take small things like that into consideration. It's a whole separate thing altogether. And I probably will end up doing some short uh, video on those discussions and ideas about basically making a quick escape from your bug out location, a little E&E &E action, things that you may want to keep into consideration. But primarily for your apartment dwellers, your prime advantage is to one extent, everything that you do is far more mobile because you have to fit a lot into smaller spaces. You have to be economical with what you stack up. Even if it's a case of get yourself a, a, a good water filtering system for that same purpose. So this way you can go and you can pour in water, filter it out, because if the building's water gets shut off for whatever reason, the city line or the building itself, you may not be able to get water to where you're at. If the water pressure drops and you're on an upper floor, there's only so much pressure to push up and at a certain point it's not going to make it and another little trick for that let's say you are in a situation where the grid is down and the pumps that push all the water throughout your city throughout your town have shut off if you are in an upper level unit one trick that you can do is you effectively open up the taps on the upper level keeping the lower levels closed because at this point any water that's in the line that pressure is building up so you open up the higher level taps above you it's going to draw that effectively water up to your level you're going to hear it come through the pipes just like if you shut your water pipes off to do some plumbing and then you turn them back on you hear that water 
pushing the air out as it comes through the pipes. Same principle. You're going to be able to draw that water up and then utilize that water. That's one thing you can look at also is how you uh, maintain your water storage, your food storage. If you live in an apartment, you're just going to have the refrigerator and freezer. So to have one or two coolers, whether they're the styrofoam coolers or the heavier duty Coleman coolers, Yeti coolers, whatever, keep those on hand, but keep bags of water inside your freezer, like one gallon Ziploc bags. You don't fill them completely. You fill them about a third up, lay them flat, let them freeze. They become ice packs. So then if you have to transfer food from your refrigerator and your freezer, you've got two or three ice packs that you can throw in there that will help keep that food cold to frozen longer than when they're sitting inside the refrigerator. Because as you know, once that power goes off, the heat from that compressor is still radiating out. But now the unit, it's not cooling itself. So all that heat starts to warm everything. And if you open and close the doors once or twice, even over the course of 10, 12 hours, it's just gonna keep getting hotter and hotter. And most food after 10 to 12 hours has dropped several or risen several degrees in temperature on the inside. And so the safety, the efficacy of keeping certain things frozen and fresh by the next day is questionable. And in some cases you can get away with it if you're gonna cook it, if it's gonna be grilled, if it's gonna be boiled, it's fine. But if it's food like deli items and certain other types of uh, produce that went from a cold temperature to now a warm temperature and it's been several hours, it may not be as good or as safe, especially if it was already packaged to begin with. It wasn't something that you fresh cut. Going into uh, vegetables very quickly, space again, try window box gardening. It'll be a whole separate video that I'll do, but window box gardening to grow in potted plants or in pots, a few small plants that don't require a lot of space, but you'll be able to keep them on hand if you've got decent light near windows setting them up on a tray or even let's say one of those uh, little bar carts that people would put different drinks on. You set those up, it's small on the square footed size, but usually has two or three tiers. You can set up a few small plants to grow inside your apartment, but you can move them to a window to get the light you need. If you do have a balcony or a ledge that you can place them on, you can set them up there during the daytime and then take them off. So, you know, when it gets colder in the evening or if it's one of those blazing hot days and you don't want to get them scorched, misting them with water and then sliding them back out of the way a little bit so they still get the ambient light. Again, that's something that I'll probably cover in another video later on. So living in an apartment, you're not at that much of a disadvantage. Really the only prime disadvantage you have is you are not the only person that has immediate access to your apartment. Property owner, maintenance people, that sort of thing, they still have access. Most good companies notify you when they are having someone come in to do work or when there is going to be something where you're gonna to have to leave your apartment, but you don't know what happens when you're not there. So that's the other thing. You live in a house, most of the time you have a good idea if someone came into your house while you were not there because that's called a break-in. Versus when you're in an apartment, maintenance could easily say, yeah, we had to check a circuit and we checked your line just to make sure that the outlet was okay. They can give you whatever excuse they wanna give you, you don't know if they took something. You don't know if they were eyeballing the stuff you had because they saw what you were bringing in and bringing out and decided, let's take a look, see what this guy has. You have no idea. So it's one of those things where, again, you try to work on discretion first, keeping things low profile out of the way, but you don't, you don't want to hinder yourself in that aspect as well. So working with getting storage containers for your immediate use, looking at where you put your food and your preps anyway. Can you store more? Is there things that you can take out of the containers that they're in and stack them up together. Long-term preps, gear, clothing that you want to keep relatively hidden or discreet, what can you put them into? So this way they're not sitting right out in the open, but you still know what where they are and what's inside them. A lot of this is just trial and error to a certain extent. And as I said before, picture it like a, a Tetris game, finding out where these pieces are gonna fit, turning and moving them around in your mind, walking through your apartment, thinking about those things, looking at, well, do you have a secondary storage place in your facility? What can you keep down there? What would you want to keep down there? You also have to consider that. If you came in to check and they say, oh, you can't go down into the storage unit, there was a flood, is everything that you have sealed up in plastic uh, tubs so this way you're not concerned about it? Or do you have things down there that should you not be able to get to them, 
it's going to hinder your ability to survive in a situation that may occur where you can't get those things that you need. So you don't want to keep your immediate bug out stuff in a location like that where you can't get to it when you have to quickly bug out. But you also may not want to keep certain high value items that should something happen again, you can't get to them. So it really comes down to thinking about where you're at. You have to know your status. You have to know your building, the people around you, that you have to know the vibe of your situation to know how you're going to move through everything and what your options can be. But there are always options. It, sometimes it takes a little while. You got to sit and you got to think about it. But there are always options and you get creative and you start looking, you start thinking, well, I could do this or I could try that or let me do this or I'm going to stick with this idea. I've got this plan. So that's it for right now. And like I said, there's several other different topics that I'm not going to try to cram it all into here. They're going to be separate on their own. So I'm going to be doing a video on that later on. So I'll catch you guys later.